A recent incident at Valhalla High School involved a student being restrained by a knee on the body by a school official and the president of the People's Association of Justice Advocates, Shane Harris, held a meeting yesterday with the Grossmont Union High School District Superintendent on that very incident. He joins us now with more on that meeting and what he would like to see happen. Shane, good morning to you. Good morning to you, Lauren. It's uh, good to talk with you, unfortunately, on these terms, but um, good, good morning to you in San Diego. So obviously, many people here in San Diego have seen this video. It's very disturbing. A fight breaks out between two young ladies and a school official attempts to intervene. But you, along with um, many others uh, that held a, a news conference, are saying that the, the way in which one of the young ladies was restrained was inappropriate, negligent. You compared it to the George Floyd incident. Uh, you can see the, the uh, knee on the young woman's uh, you know, face, neck area there. There's a lot of different ways, um, you know, that this is being looked at, investigated. What what do you really think needs to happen from this point, and what did you discuss with the superintendent? Well, you know, Lauren, um, my office has been uh, uh, con in contact with the group home uh, where the young lady uh, has lived. We've been in contact with uh, the Grossmont Union High School District. Uh, and the reason why we, we, we have done that is because we wanted to make sure that we did our due diligence. While this photo of the knee near the neck or on the neck uh, had been surfacing, we wanted to fact find and figure out what are the context and what is the details of, of, of the situation and, and, and ultimately concerned about the child who happens to be a foster child. And you know my story, 13 years in the foster care system, I know what it feels like to experience trauma and have nobody there for you. So that was our initial uh, reasoning. We've held judgment um, on how far we want to go regarding this school employee. Um, however, based upon our fact finding, it has been very clear, Lauren, that the restraint that was used, many people, even who agree with the school employee on breaking up the fight, feel that that restraint is something that should be zero tolerance for anybody in this country um, especially those working with our kids. And I think that we compared and contrast the George Floyd incident um, with the knee on the neck there to this particular incident with the knee near or on the neck here, because it demonstrates that whether it's five seconds or whether it's 50 seconds or whether it's five minutes, that this knee on the neck or near the neck restraint has shown to be dangerous there have been doctors who have talked about the carotid restraint or how close this could be to that. And it's got to be something that we make zero tolerance in this country. So we talked with the superintendent yesterday, and I want to thank uh, Superintendent Kemper, who made the time to sit down with me and Bishop Bowser and Mark Powell and others uh, who have been concerned about this incident. And I want to be clear, Lauren, this is a diverse coalition of leaders. Mark Powell, the parents, president of Parents for Quality Education, was at the press conference yes, uh, on Tuesday where we first addressed this. And many people across racial lines and different backgrounds feel that there needs to be discipline regarding this employee. So we talked with the superintendent yesterday about some of these next steps going forward and some of the concerns that we have. Yeah, I mean, and you mentioned, you know, steps going forward. And I think anybody who you know, uh, some people have looked at the video, and uh, for those that haven't seen it uh, through its entirety, the young girl, once she is pulled off, the other girl is seen taking a number of swings at the school official. I mean, the school official was also uh, taking quite a beating as he was trying to get control of this fight and pr protect these girls from hurting one another. Um, well, and, and some people might, might, some people have said, well, well, what did you want him to do? What was he supposed to do? So I think that begs the question uh, about training because hmm. perhaps, you, you know, what is the training for these school officials? And I don't know. I mean, he doesn't look like a school resource officer. What kind of, you know, was he just a teacher, a, a, a yard duty? I mean, these are questions that, that people are asking. And I guess, you know, I'm, I'm sure training came up in your conversation with the superintendent. What, what did you discuss would be the ideal way to have broken up that fight and restrained that young woman? Well, Lauren, you bring up a good point. And I've had to counter 
uh, respond to many people who have had this perspective that, oh, she was swinging back. Okay, let's be clear. He is about three times her size. But on top Correct. of that, uh, let's be clear that what triggered her was when he got on top of her. And my understanding is that his part of his private parts got in her face. There's a history with this young lady where she has encountered things and that would traumatize any child. And so she was responding to the trauma that she has had, particularly as a foster child, something I understand very well. So I understand that. Um, I've been in that situation as a kid in the foster care system. I think that uh, where we go next, you're right. We met with the superintendent. The superintendent confirmed there is no standalone policy at the Grossmont Uni Union High School District regarding breaking up fights. There is no standalone um, training. There's no annual or quarterly training on de-escalation policy. And Lauren, quite honestly, it says in their, in their current policy uh, uh, regarding restraints that uh, uh, it talks about school uh, police. But Lauren, all of the employees, they don't have any school police. They only have, they contract with the Sheriff's Department and the Oklahoma Police Department. Mm -hmm. And the employees that they have all employees are, are prone to break up fights. So yes, this does beg the question, Lauren, which is why my office is gonna bring forth some policy proposals because in every situation, Lauren, whether it's a crisis or whether it's a long-term situation, we believe at the People's Association of Justice Advocates in the ability to find a solution going forward, bring forth policy and solutions, not just talk about the problem. So my office is gonna bring forth a number of policy proposals to the Grossmont Union High School District. The superintendent was happy to work with my office and, 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 and discuss these proposals going forward. One, I wanna see that we implement a standalone policy at the Grossmont Union High School District for breaking up fights. I've asked the superintendent to ban the use of any restraint near or on the neck of any child. That should be something that should be 100% given. And then we've asked for a policy regarding uh, how to uh, uh, de-escalation uh, uh, training. There needs to be ongoing three times a year quarterly de-escalation training at the Grossmont Union High School District that addresses a lot of these issues. Um, and then obviously cultural diversity training. I mean, this is an African-American foster youth who has experienced so much trauma and people could talk about the fight and people could talk about all of the, I, but at the end of the day, you can't fight a child. At the end of the day, you and I both know, Lauren, that our children come from all kinds of different backgrounds and we need to understand the diversity of the children in our schools. So I've asked them also to implement a cultural diversity, equity and inclusion plan uh, and, and implement training also quarterly to talk about these different backgrounds and these different children. And I think something good can come out of this. I have asked for the district to fire this, this uh, employee. I do believe that this employee overstepped his bounds. I think he let his temperament get in the way of his job. And, and, and yes, people could say, well, what else was he supposed to do? What I do know, Lauren, is after what we saw on May 25th, 2020, when George Floyd died with a knee on his neck, begging for his life for nine minutes and 29 seconds, we have to be aware of the implications of doing these kinds of actions, anything near or around that neck with a knee. Anybody should understand, I don't wanna go there. I may go somewhere else, but I don't want to go there. And I think that there needs to be zero tolerance on this kind of restraint. It is something that nobody should use. Police departments are being banned from using it. School officials should not be able to use it. This is a dangerous tool and restraint and has been proven to be a problem. And I think that uh, that's why we're asking for his firing. Um, I do understand he's a former sheriff the, per the NAACP San Diego who released a statement early on about this. And we are continuing to fact find and investigate, but I think that he needs to be fired because he, he crossed the line um, in so many ways and, and this child's life is hurt. Many people have argued me on whether he should be criminally investigated. I don't believe in that. I'm not jumping the gun here. I'll leave that up to those who investigate criminal complaints, but I believe that he does need to be fired. I believe he crossed the line and every school employee at the Grossmont Union High School District needs to understand that this kind of restraint has a historical trauma to it. And we remember that from last year.
All right. Well, Shane Harris, thank you so much for the time this morning and for coming on our air and discussing it with us. I think we'll we'll be discussing it further as uh, the investigation continues and we, we hear a decision from the school district and an announcement on steps moving forward to make improvements. But thank you for your time this morning. Thank you. Absolutely.